Hello all, and welcome back to Creos Gaming. I am continuing my story playthrough of Creeper World 3. Last time we were in Crosslaw, where we got the shield key for Vapen, which will let us destroy the warp inhibitor, and we also found a recording that mentioned the Stiglek. Uh, there we go. Abraxas. This has to be a Tycon world. Leah. It once was, but the technology is here is different and not exactly Tycon in origin. It's more recent and seems to be in perfect working order. Perhaps a later civilization updated it and kept it working. That could have been true, but Scars, this equipment seems to have been built very recently. Perhaps in the last 100 years. The last human civilization has been gone for far longer than that. Well, what does it do? There appear to be three power centers, those blocky structures. Each is connected via a power conduit to three parts of a central station. My guess is all three parts have to be active for it to function. And how do we bring the power centers online? Scans show they are in pristine condition and not being damaged by the creeper. If they work via the same technology as fractal collectors, it may be as simple as clearing out all the creeper from around each power center. And that should activate the central station, the thing we don't know anything about. Yes. I can say that even though this equipment is new and in perfect condition, it does not appear to be much more than some sort of testing facility. The power produced by those power centers just isn't enough to do much damage, regardless of what, actually, what it actually does. That's encouraging, I think. Well, let's flip the switch on this thing and see what happens. Alright, pause it as usual. And let's see what we're dealing with. So this one is powered already somehow. Uh, these two are not going to be because they're going to have creeper on them. I am going to get a second, third, excuse me, command center here. Uh, there's this barrier to the stop, uh, to the creeper, which might be beneficial. There is a message, and we have two spore launchers with three spores each. So this could be interesting. Um, I wonder if it's worth trying to land down here and build a defense on this side. I'm probably going to try that the first time and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've had a number of false starts on this level. Um, this is creating 400 at 0.17, which means it's producing creep so fast that two Berthas aren't really able to make a noticeable dent in it. Uh, what I'm going to do is try and run up the center here, but that requires a balance of using this siphon properly. Uh, I have made a couple attempts at this, and I have failed rather spectacularly a couple of times to get the siphon to do precisely what I want it to. Uh, use it the way I want it to, I guess would be a better way of putting that. So as soon as this first one finishes, I can start building the siphon. There we go. And as soon as the siphon is up, I can pause it to start building... Oh, there we go. Start building a set of relays. I'm actually going to start and work my way back. Um, here I'm going to put mortars, which is why I want to get to this center quickly, because the mortars will be able to reduce the deeper creep in these areas. Um, but the relays need there we go that'll work all right because i'm trying to just get relays as there so that'll cover the relays now in addition to the relays i need cannons defending them and i'm gonna build four cannons there will be two to defend this relay and i'm gonna jump the other two up there to defend that relay um, and then i'm gonna let this run and in the process, I'm also going to build additional energy infrastructure to try to produce as much as I can. Um, in addition to the energy, I need these because my part of my defense is going to be a sprayer operating always on. And then I also need energy so i'm going to start building these i'm balanced just barely so i might be able to handle another reactor okay cannons are up 
Let me deposit. I think I took to. Whoop, no, you stay. You, on the other hand, need to move. And yeah, I think I took too long. I wasn't paying enough attention to see that that was about to have that happen. So what I'm going to have to do is they're going to land, and then I will build another one. But that's unfortunately going to be a loss of time, and potentially, I mean, I might still be okay. So long as that one comes up. These aren't built yet. These are holding okay. So that did work. Now I can keep building reactors because I do have a little bit of energy left. Um, I have, these are at 48%. I'm not going to get past those. Uh, I'm in the plus. So I can build another reactor. What, oh, and now you can see that there's, um, this is what this is for because there is stuff coming in. The can't, the, those are doing their job. I lost, lost the siphon, but this is about to come online. I hope. Let me deactivate this one until that one comes online. This might be flowing too fast. Oh, what did I lose? I lost a collector. That's fine. As long as this guy gets up and this guy gets up, I might be okay. Really, where my issue is, is in energy utilization. That's what I have to keep under control. Now, all right, so we'll see how this goes, because um, my plan is to try and get these wings to get this turned on. I also have to be ready to deal with the spore launchers, which I was not ready for sometimes in the past. Um, I'm going to build this even though it will cost me, uh, and then I need more energy just because that's kind of a given here. I don't have a whole lot of space, unfortunately, and I do wonder how much... Um, what I should have been doing is trying to... Alright, so I may be able to use some of this space for additional energy. I'll try it, and we'll see what happens. And then where he is, I can also use for additional energy. Okay. So, that's going to be quite a lot, but when those come on, they'll help me with my deficit. Which is pretty significant right now. I'm I'm slightly reducing, so it's actually not a terrible deficit. But now I've got a minute until those fire, which means I need to get beamers in, and I don't think I have the energy I need to really properly prepare beamers. I'm hoping that that finishes. Come on. It may be necessary to turtle. I did try turtling, but I didn't feel like I, I had a ton of energy. Like, I had a good energy, but I was also very restricted. I was stuck here, and it took quite a lot of effort just to get through here. Um, but, I, I mean, I was making progress, whereas right now I really am not. Um, I, I just don't have... You know, I might be making progress in as much as I'm getting these sections better defended. Um, Alright, so I do have two beamers up. The problem is they're each going to be launching three... Um, what do you call them? Three spores. And there they go. And yeah, I don't have nearly enough to deal with three spores. So this is going to be terrible, especially if it goes after my energy infrastructure. Uh, which it didn't really there. There it did, but I've got the defensive... Alright, so, that wasn't, like, that wasn't the end of the world. I think I can recover from that. So I'm going to keep going with what I'm doing. I'm going to keep... I'll repair some of what I lost. And... Even if I am at a huge deficit. But now I'm bringing in the potential to improve efficiencies. Um, so if I can do that, I might be better suited to handle this. Come on. Um, it is going to take a little while because the first energy efficiency is at 20. It's only 9 more, so that's good. Um, and I am holding this area, which is something I was worried I may not be able to do. Not that I think I want to build another one. 
However, they're charged, so I'll build two more there. That gives me energy efficiency, which will be very helpful, I hope. Because I'm barely, well, I was kind of pulling out of the deficit. And as soon as the things fire, I'll be back into the deficit, I'm sure. Because my stuff will start reloading. But, I do now have enough that I can handle that firing. So I'm in a spot where I actually have, like some level of stability, which is kind of what I was after. Uh, when I get to 20, I can go for AC efficiency because I'm just barely... Um, oh, let me put this collector back as well. Um, because I may soon be able to start moving out if the AC efficiency allows for it. I'm going to jump this guy forward to try and work towards that. Now this is starting to build up. So, unfortunately, I need a mortar there, which means using more energy as well. But I can try increasing the structure there. Um, what I don't want to do is just stall. I need to try to expand, but expanding requires... Um, okay, so hey, this is actually pushing. Excellent. It looks like the AC increase may have been beneficial. I'm going to put mortars in to help with pushing stuff further back. And I think at 40 I can get another energy. Yep, so pretty quick. To, we're pretty close to another energy efficiency here. There we are. And I can just put stuff in. Alright, so that works. Put in that and that. Now, if I had enough uh, anti creep, I'd be tempted to drop an anti creep uh, or uh, sprayer up here. And I just don't know that it's worth doing that and risking what's going on back here. Uh, what is worth doing potentially is upgrading fire range uh, for my stuff. I am now in the green, which it's been a while since I had been, so I'm happy about that. How far in am I? I am eight minutes in. Okay, that's not terrible. All right, I am still in the green, so I can get some more energy going. And I'm still not coming down, so I will do that. All right, that means that I can actually start putting in... Um, that's probably a bad place for you. Destroy you. So I can start putting in... Additional weapons. So grab some mortars there. Alright, and keep building up my energy infrastructure. Because having good energy is necessary to be able to get a strong push. And a strong push is what I need to start working towards. Alright, so I'm handling those. Right, I am now over committed. That's fine. It'll only be for a little bit. Well, hopefully. Do another energy increase. That should deal with the overcommission. Yep, see, it's starting to drop pretty quick. Alright, so let's throw another couple cannons in to be ready to start moving in on that. Um, uh, what are these called? These are sport hand. Oh, that, that emitter. Um, and now I am back in the green, so I am going to build some more energy. Look at what my reduction is. Not quite. Okay, there. Now, I should be about to a point where I can get fire range. There we go. That'll help push forward. Let's get you up there. That was actually potentially the wrong one, so let's move you down. You can go there, and you can go there. And then when they've got that cleared, what I need is actually a mortar to get ready to assault the upper layers. All right. However, Anti-Creeper is very much so doing its job, which is good to know. Add collectors to feed this section now that it's here, and then move the mortar up some. Okay, so this looks 
stable for the most part. What do we got going on at the forge? Okay. Build speed could be useful. Packet speed's always useful. Okay. So I'm trying to extend my reach up top here. Which is going to require some little bit of incremental moving, unfortunately. Um, I do also think I have the energy now that I can probably start attacking the other side at the same time and not actually have to wait. So let's drop in three cannons and a couple mortars. I'm going to add a mortar here as well. And that will put me in a deficit just because of how much I have built up, but that's okay. 20 seconds roughly till those go, but this has been able to hold them well enough so far, so I'm not too worried about that. Alright, energy's coming back again, so just because I can, I'm going to add in more reactors to increase my energy output. Okay. Yep, and that's still held. Okay. So with that, we can start the progging forwards. Okay, there, good. And then this one now has... Alright, we'll let these finish. I've got fire rate. Should have gone with range again, potentially, but... Okay. What I want to know is... Well, you know what? This guy's not doing anything. Let's move him. This guy's not either, so let's see if he can land up there that well enough. Actually, I don't even know if I need to do that or if I can get a nullifier on the lower section. Doesn't quite look like I can get a nullifier on the lower section. Alright, drop a relay there. Those guys are not going to survive though. Yep, I let that guy die. Oh well. So now they're kind of holding off. Good. All right. Can I get a nullifier? Right, that might be too much. So let's kick him over there. See if the nullifier can replace him. Yes. All right. So that nullifier will go. Now I can start coming down here. Good, that's going. That'll be done shortly. When it finishes, I'll probably end up dropping a mortar into that circle. So that... Uh-oh. So let's move this beamer over. Another relay there to feed it. As I said, we'll drop a mortar in the circle. Move the guy up to control it a little better. Well, what did I lose? Really? Which one? Not quite sure. Oh my. I lost a beamer too. Apparently these guys were doing something useful after all. Okay, so that's getting cleared. Now I can start working on moving forward down here to get this other one cleared. It's taking a little longer than I'd prefer, but this is more under control, so it's not in a position of being arduous, it's just in a position of being time consuming, unfortunately.
be able to keep it green here in a second. And as they turn green, they move so that they're facing that side. Okay, so it is interesting. In the last mission, there was a discussion of why the creeper, again, another, I think it was another discussion of why the creeper takes some things and not others. And in this case, it ends up being a little more interesting in that uh, what the creeper is, like the creeper has taken, like it had corrupted other installations. So other mechanical formats were usurped by the creeper. We have the uh, runner nests, we had the, what else was there? There was something else that was similar in that regard. Okay, so more fire range, more fire rate, so that they can try and, nope, he's not gonna do it. Let's see if I can get this guy to come up and help out. They're really close, so this may not be possible. I might need to come at this from a different perspective, so drop this guy down, because I do think I need to come at this from a different perspective. Move this guy up here. Move him forward. I'm wondering if I can't get a nullifier. Yes, I can. Okay. So I can get a nullifier there. Relay. Anyway, so this would be the... F I think this would be the first installation that we have encountered in the game, where the creeper hasn't taken it for its own purposes. And so, for example, these, they shut off when the creeper hits it. So the creeper isn't using it itself, which uh, is interesting because the last thing we found was a historical record that the creeper hadn't taken, and it had information that was placed on it from, it, like, a long time ago, relative to where we are now in the story of the game. And the reason that seems significant is because the creeper is supposed to destroy everything it encounters. Now, they already talked some about the different things that the creeper doesn't actually destroy and what the significance of that is. But in the process, one of the things that uh, was said is that there are um, items that aren't destroyed. Um, so, like, uh, cubes, data cubes, and that kind of thing. And what this is, is a little different in that it's an installation and a, uh, like, equipment that hasn't been destroyed, which I think this is the first time, not destroyed per se, but destroyed or uh, co-opted. And so this is the first time we've found something where the creeper seems to have not interacted with something at all because it's fully functional so far as we can tell. Uh, but it's not functioning against us like the other installations that we've encountered. The runner nests were turned into runners and that was the creeper co-opting even biological entities and the other things that have been done along those lines. Uh, so it's just a change in creeper behavior, which has been part of, I would say, one of the themes of this game is that the creeper is not behaving as uh, as it would be expected. And specifically, I might say, as it would be expected by Abraxas. I don't know if it would be said, all right, so that's turning. It, what has not been expected by humanity in general, because we don't have insight in this game into what humanity in general thinks. Uh, rather, all we have... Oh, that's useful. So it looks like these are very similar to the pushers in Reaper World 2. So I can come up here, drop a nullifier. Can I get both of them? I can. Drop a nullifier there, and I can't get to that one. And actually, I may not have... Well, I have to do that because this is getting pushed down, but I can't get past until this goes away. Um, so the other thing I can actually do is grab a cannon, drop that there to start clearing out what's in the way so that when this dies, there is still stuff. So let's actually just go for build speed and packet speed since that's pretty much all I have left. So 
just it's interesting that now we have creeper uh, not only preserving items like uh, data cubes or uh, technology or those kind of things oh I thought it was in range it was not okay I'm um, speaking of being in range let's drop you there all right so that is starting to clear excellent I can now just continue my run up there and drop a nullifier and that'll finish that off. And we'll get a data cube here in a second. Or, well, I'm not sure if that's what they're called, but we'll get data here in a second as well. There we are. It says, Leah, I don't know if this is good or bad. Abraxas, more ancient historical volumes, more references to the Ark. Not exactly. Then what? I've never seen this form of data encoding before. It is very complex, nearly perfect, and recorded at an atomic scale with incredible fault tolerance. But I, I can still resolve most of the content and translate it. It seems to be a te technical specification for the field device on this world. I was right. This tech was a test for a part of a device being constructed elsewhere. And who built this equipment and recorded the message? Scars, the designator that appears within the contents, appears to translate to 16th Transient Regiment, 4th Ephemeral Division, Loki Hive. My gods, the Loki are here? Now I know my purpose. Um, it is odd that the Loki created something that, near as I can tell, uh, destroys... And I don't need to do this because then that one's finished. These are going to die anyway. Um, that the Loki created something that seems to... It doesn't destroy the Egg Creeper, but it does clear it? It pushes it out of the way. So why, if the Creeper is created by the Loki, why are the Loki creating something that... Oh, and it's pushing it into space. Like, it can overflow off of the world. That's interesting. Okay, so we will claim victory in 23 minutes. Let's see how far off of normal that is. Yep, double. Still in that range. Okay, continue. And next time we will be moving on to... Oh, so we have little side worlds we can do to get to the little addition, the extra space. These are different uh, sub, -zone, sub game types. So I'll do, I'll hit those real quick because I don't know if they're going to be part of the story, like if they would expand on it or not. Uh, but I'll head over to Cliff next time and we will find out. For now, thanks all. Hello all, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button below. You can also subscribe using the channel image in the center of the video. If you are interested in more content in this video series, to the left is a link to the full playlist. Alternatively, when it is available, to the right will be a link to the next video in the series. Thanks all.